This week, the race is on. Three, two, one, go! In Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire. It's like a, some kind of competition, Phil. With the odds against us... I'm not getting the fuzzy feeling. It's not grim. We'll do whatever it takes. I chill them until they say yes. To find our stride. We don't need to see him, do we? Don't have to just get the checkbook out, I'll be fine. <laughs> this is exactly what I was looking for. Oh, we don't I... hear that every day. <laughs> and cross the finish line. Done deal. Thank you, Kirsty. <laughs> She's ever so nice. I do love her. <laughs> This week, we're searching in Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire. I'm trying to find an oasis in Oxford's arid market. And I'm seeking a resting place for a nomadic couple and their young daughter. It attracts travellers, this neck of the woods, doesn't it? Yes, international travellers all over the place. <laughs> and I was hoping they were here for us, Kirsty. Sadly not, but this place also attracts house buyers who come seeking the culture and heritage of Oxfordshire and its bustling city of Oxford. Throw in fast transport links to London and renowned schools and universities and you can understand why it's like a magnet for commuters and families alike. What's not so attractive are rising property prices. House prices in Oxford are almost 14 times the average salary there, with a property price to earning ratio to rival that of pricey London. But our first set of house hunters are searching in neighbouring Gloucestershire. Property prices here are nearly 14% above the national average and rose last year by almost 9%, so there's no time to waste. And that's where we're kicking off our search, with market researcher Louise and photographer husband Phil. We first met at university and bonded over the love of beer festivals, etc. You know, it was just the, I guess, the start of a, of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> This globe-trotting couple have spent much of their lives living and working abroad, including a life-changing move they couldn't refuse. We sort of talked for it for about five seconds, and we would up six and uh, move to uh, Moscow. Which was just the most incredible, exciting, dynamic place. Now five years back in the UK, and with the arrival of daughter Annabelle and dog Alfie, they're dreaming of the perfect family home to settle down in. So for me, what I would love would be an older property, um, somewhere that has real kind of character and character features, um, somewhere that's big. And it needs to be big because there's another family member to consider. Phil's mum, who currently lives in Spain, um, is desperate to move back to the UK and we've asked her to come and, and move in with us. We've decided that we would like her to have her own space but be very close by, so that she can spend a lot of time with, with Annabelle. But that's not the full picture. The house also needs to accommodate Phil's photography business. I photograph a lot of horses, we do a lot of fashion shoots. It'd be perfect if the house had somewhere where I can have the business, where I can have a studio. And to complicate further, currently living in Oxfordshire, they're moving to Gloucestershire for lower house prices and to be closer to Phil's family. We don't really know Gloucestershire at all. So there's some really good reasons that we want to move there, but we don't really know and we haven't really had the time to investigate properly, to be honest. It's a whopper of a house search. They both agree on what they need, but as ever, the devil's in the detail. I think the specifics is perhaps where we're not exactly at odds, but where my vision and, and Phil's vision are maybe slightly different. Oh, I didn't know that, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just thought we were both quite flexible. Yeah. Oh dear, flexibility, the key to a great relationship. Right, Kirsty? Absolutely, Poppet, as long as you flexibly agree with me. So you've done Russia, you've done Oxford, and now Gloucestershire. We've got to travel and see so many different amazing places. Mm. And now I want an amazing place that we can call our home. And really put down the roots. Yeah. And I suppose for your mum as well, it's a major move for her. It is, we were quite surprised that she ever wanted to come back to the UK. Let's just talk about the kind of specifics of, of the house. The house we want ideally has got four bedrooms. It has this big kitchen, hopefully diner, or can be converted into a kitchen diner. And I want somewhere that's pretty. I hope that we go yeah. in and we get a bit of a fuzzy feeling. I've never heard anyone say <laughs> a fuzzy feeling. You're, I, I know exactly what you mean. Doesn't mean I'll find it, but I, but I know what you mean. Do you think you tackle any work to, to make a house right? Yeah, of course. We've got quite a lot going on here, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. And your budget? 500,000. <sighs> Just a lot of money. Three. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be deep breaths all round, Phil. It's a big old search. 
Louise and Phil have a budget of £500,000 from a mortgage and some cash savings. They want a family home with character, four bedrooms and a separate annex for Phil's mum. Within reach of a village for Louise and for the photographer in the house, outside space and scope to build a studio. As for location, our couple are flexible as long as it's accessible to amenities for Louise. So our search will concentrate in villages around Gloucester, as far south as Coley and as far north as Forthampton. Back in Oxford, I'm with first time buyer Tim, a senior collections officer for Oxford's famed Ashmolean Museum, who, despite finding the perfect city to live in and the perfect job, is struggling to find the perfect flat in the competitive Oxford market. I found it really difficult because the properties that are really good, the ones that I've wanted to view, by the time I've sort of cycled over there, it's sold. It's a fierce market where speed is everything, and it's no surprise that two years on, he's still looking and renting a room in someone else's home. I'm ready for my own place, especially having my own kitchen. At 34, that's the dream, having my own kitchen. His own budget stretched to 180 grand, not enough for Oxford, but mum and dad have gifted his inheritance early. My parents came to the rescue and I've now got a chance to actually buy somewhere in Oxford, which, which is a dream come true, because I never, I never thought that would be a possibility. There are some pressures with being given that amount of money. I am a little bit worried that I'll pick something that maybe my parents don't approve of. He's not alone. 57% of first-time buyers under 35 need help to buy from friends or family. And he has an uphill struggle ahead. He wants a desirable cycle to work, limiting his search area to within the Oxford Ring Road. Inside the Ring Road seems to be where everybody wants to live. Outside of it, to commute into it, just takes so long. A one-bedroom flat is my starting point. Ideally with some character, I'd look outside the Ring Road for that special property. But in a market with a shortage of stock and where demand is so high flats are virtually selling themselves, you can't afford to be too picky. I loathe Pebble Dash. Pebble Dash kind of looks like someone's thrown up on a house. Also haunting. Um, if the house is haunted, I, I don't want to live there. Well, hard to call that too picky, but if things do get tough, you know who to call. You have £250,000 to spend. Great. Except we're in Oxford. You have been seeing a series of flats, which don't seem in any way to reflect the sum of a quarter of a million pounds. No, that's, that's the tricky bit, I that think. That is the tricky bit, yes. It's not easy. What we are going to be able to do is drill down into what represents best value for money. Dream scenario, where would you live? Dream scenario, um, East Oxford. Right. Um, dream property, warehouse flat somewhere with exposed brick wall. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't exist in Oxford, no, I know. No, no, it doesn't exist in Oxford. That is like looking for a banana in a hardware store. It doesn't exist in Oxford. Maybe, maybe a, a converted house, uh, a masonette, yeah. uh, some kind of Georgian bay window, something with just a little bit of a character, a bit yeah. of a charm, just so when I come home, I have a little smile on my face. Great, fantastic. He may want a smile on his face, but unfortunately, the Oxford market isn't a happy place. Tim has a budget of £250,000 from a mortgage and cash from his mum and dad. He wants a minimum one-bedroom flat with an easy cycle to work and ideally some character. Because it's all about that desirable cycle to work, our search area will focus on central Oxford. But I suspect we'll have to push him outside the Ring Road, as far north as Kidlington and south as Abington, in the search for the perfect pad. Here you go. Your wish is my come on. Cold day in Oxford. You're going to have to avoid all these bicyclists. I know, I know. I'm meanwhile going to be after doing a lot of miles. Are Gloucestershire, you? huge search area. Windy, Massive. Windy lanes. Yeah. Um, I uh, am in a bit of a hole, to be dead honest, because Oxford is so absurdly expensive. Does so... he want much? No, poor lamb. He doesn't want much. He just wants something. <laughs> Well, my guy's search is going to be led by the fact that they want a granny annex. Well, if they want to move to Oxford, maybe I could put Tim in their granny annex and then, you know, done deal. Yeah. Why is it always a granny annex? Because women live longer than men, I'm afraid. Is that why it is? I'd better sharpen my axe up, hadn't I? That's a good idea, Phil. Get your knitting needles out. Whatever keeps us together longer, dearest. 
My first stop with Phil and Louise takes us deep into the glorious Gloucestershire countryside. We've come to Viney Hill, an area on the edge of the Forest of Dean. It's perfect for idyllic family life with amenities under two miles away in the village of Blakeney. What do you think of this? Um, wow. <laughs> a proper old farmhouse, grade two listed, and it has the most fantastic annex. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Certainly it's got curb appeal. Yeah. Good. Let's get on inside. OK, Bye. great. It's certainly passed on the outside, and the inside of this 17th century farmhouse is no less impressive. Divided into two independent but connected dwellings, the main area has a sitting room and dining room packed with the character they've asked for, while the four bedrooms across three floors are equally charming. The annex has its own kitchen diner downstairs and a bedroom and living room upstairs, perfect for Phil's mum. Outside is a double garage with scope for his business and a large family garden. I think it's a super home. It certainly ticks the boxes and it's just under budget of £495,000. The whole thing is a little bit higgledy-piggledy, but that's kind of the, yeah. the fun of it, the history, the character of it. I like a bit of quirkiness. It's a little dark, but I think that's just part of the nature of, of an older property. Mm -hmm. I think we definitely work with it, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, I'd say the search is looking bright, Phil. Always a good sign when they're talking about making it work. Currently the master bedroom. Wow. Huge. <laughs> Big size. Gorgeous um, views. Yeah, together with its stunning views. In terms of character, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. Well, a big tick in the bedroom. Those views really lifted them to another level. And the annex next door has plenty of room for Granny and Annabelle playtime. This is currently set up as Granny's bedroom. This is mm -hmm. nice. With an ensuite bathroom. Ah, OK. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's nice. It's also, you know, I like the, the window. It feels mm -hmm. really nice and light. Mm -hmm. So you've still got the views. OK. okay. Have, have a wonder. Thanks. 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 You can see it's awfully higgledy-piggledy. Yeah. There's lots of choices. This place is definitely getting the thumbs up, and there's plenty of space for daughter Annabelle in the main house. <laughs> Mind your head. Oh. Interesting. We asked for character. I like the fact you've got the sleeping area and then you've got the kind yeah. of the fun play area down there. Yeah, it's nice, quirky, yeah? That's what we said we wanted. Yeah. Well, I wasn't entirely confident how they'd react to such an old house, but just on arriving at the outside, they absolutely loved the, the, the character and the sense of history about it. I mean, there's a lot that I like about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a few things I don't like. The, the layout with all the different levels and the it's stairs and everything would... Baby-friendly, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. How they will cope with the practicalities of living in it um, remains to be seen. That's the trade-off when you ask for character. But for the snapper who needs a studio, this place delivers. This, I wondered whether it could be a studio. I mean, currently a double garage, but plenty of room above. Height is a big, is a big mm. factor. That is actually yeah. a floor. Oh, OK. If that can come out, or at least part of it come out, that would work. Yeah, no, definitely. But how do you feel about the package and the main house? I mean, I think there's, there's rooms that I really love. There are a few bits I was like, not quite sure about the layout. On the whole, am I on the right kind of lines with this? Yeah, yeah I think absolutely. so. Come on, then, we'll move on. Thank you. It's a great house, Phil, but to get Louise firmly in frame, you might need to improve on that layout. I can only hope they'll find the next one picture perfect. This week, I'm in Gloucestershire, winding around the country lanes, hoping to spot the perfect period property for Louise and Phil. They saw the charm in my first house, but perhaps a little too much. There are a few bits I was like, not quite sure about the layout. While I'm dodging cyclists in Oxford, looking for a comfy corner for Tim. But what we can't do is dodge Oxford's high house prices and a serious lack of stock. Dubbed one of the most unaffordable places to live in the UK with average prices 14 times the average salary. Desperate to end years of renting and spend his parents' early inheritance gift wisely, Tim wants a one-bed flat with some character, ideally within the Oxford Ring Road. My first property in Temple Cowley is three miles east of town, with an easy 15-minute bike ride to work. Fingers crossed he likes it, because this is as close to Oxford as he's likely to get. So we're on the top floor up there. Great. I think with a couple of tweaks, this flat could be interesting. OK, I'm excited to see. Ooh, very positive you are. I try too. and stay positive. And let's hope that positivity continues inside. 
Large windows in this 1960s top floor flat make it feel open and light. And a good sized living room has the added bonus of a balcony. Tim asked for a one bedroom, but here he gets two, one of which is being used as a utility room. An outside features pretty communal gardens and a nifty station to park his trusty bike. But it's the commute that's a winner here, and he'll have to pay for it, because this flat is top of budget at £250,000. So, what you have here is a light room with a terrace, but no view. One of those trees is a conifer, which I think could come down. That would make a big difference. Yeah, to the spires of Oxford. And then what I would do is I would take down this there. wall. OK. You don't need this second bedroom. If you knock down that wall, that would be a really decent sized sitting room. Yeah. I do like the idea of knocking walls down. Yeah, good. All the best people do. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the wall down makes the space work better for Tim, but easy to put back up again when he sells on. It's a win-win, and in this market, that's hard to come by. Poor lamb. It's daft when you can't get one bed flat for 250 That's halfway decent. But that's the truth of the matter. He's not being fussy. It's fact. And another fact, that balcony is best used in the summer. You're coming in from the cold? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> That's how I do it. I chill them until they say, yes, I'll buy anything. <laughs> the Ice Maiden Strax. How many properties do you think you've seen? Um, leading up to now, probably about 15, 20. Where does this come out of the 20? It's not grim. I think it's, it's sort of in the, the top five of, of good. I'm sad that it doesn't have any that little well, bit of character. But that that it, is what we... Ultimately, that's what will drive us outside the ring road. Yes, definitely. This was the only flat within the ring road which we felt was a viable option to show you. Really? Oh, I don't want to use flash language. But this is the penthouse, Tim. <laughs> this is the penthouse. I'm in the penthouse. Penthouse or not, Kirsty, Tim's artistic eye seems set on something with more character. Yes, but how far is he willing to cycle for it? Onwards and outwards, Phil. Back in Gloucestershire, Phil and Louise are also looking for character, and the last house was packed with it, but they were unsure of the layout. So my next place addresses that problem and offers fantastic value for money. We've come just over 13 miles north of Gloucester to the beautiful village of Forthampton. This stunning property really has got the wow factor, but the busy road nearby would be a compromise. For my next trick, <laughs> I have a barn conversion for you. That is breathtaking. That's stunning. That's beautiful. Got the right kind of curb appeal? Yes. I think so. We don't need to see him, do we? You don't have to. <laughs> don't have to just get the checkbook out, it'll be fine. Yeah. No shortcuts here, Phil. This impressive barn conversion offers a mix of character and modern sensibilities, and unlike the last house, the flow here is good. With a large open plan kitchen and a spacious living room with French doors leading out onto the front garden. And four bedrooms spread equally between two floors offers them flexibility. However, there is neither a studio nor annex. But with around an acre of land, there's plenty of scope to build a studio for Phil and a triple garage could be converted for his mum. It's an immaculate family home and is on the market five grand under budget of £495,000. And I'm kicking things off in what could become the annex. So I thought this had potential for your mum. Obviously needs converting <laughs> and possibly you could make it bigger. I think like all these doors stripped out and windows in instead. Mm. I think, yeah, why not? Look. Can we live in can I live in here? <laughs> Mum can live in with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works for them. I'm glad the renovations get the okay, but I'm more concerned with problems they can hear as opposed to see. That's the M50. Okay. This house is on the market at 495000 so it's in budget. If it wasn't for that motorway, it'd be at least £100,000 more. It's just if you want to sit out here and enjoy a glass of wine, is that going to interfere with you? Hmm. There's no hiding from that road, and it depends how you can deal with that. Yeah. Better hope the inside really revs their engines, Phil. 
very modern, very contemporary. Oh, it's gorgeous. I really like this. I think breakfast the idea of being the able idea to... The idea of a breakfast room is really quite, yeah. quite appealing here. And Do can you... you hear the road? No. Not at not all. Really. No. You can't see it either, no. actually. Happy? Very... Right kind of yeah. size? Yeah, yeah. Very... yeah. Smooth gear change, Mr Spencer. The noisy road is left far behind. And then the living room. Oh, wow. Um, oh, <laughs> this is gorgeous. It's got height. Yeah. yeah. Light. All of these beams. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. It's triple glazed. Mm. And again, you can't hear the road. No. Which way do you want to head? Should we go this way? Yeah. Help yourself. Great. Encouraging reactions, Phil. You're cruising now. Oh, this is nice. Oh. <laughs> How cute. So this could be a space for Annabelle when she's a bit older. All sounding very positive at the moment. They seem very happy with it, which makes me happy too. And they say you can't buy happiness. How do you get on? Yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. Amazing. Good, I think. It's got a great flow to it. Yeah, it's definitely um, made me kind of rethink the layout of the last one. I don't yeah. think it really would work for us, um, whereas okay. I think this would be good in the short term, but also work in the longer term as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's a good day's house, aren't it? Yeah. Indeed, um, yeah. So. More to follow, though, so don't get overexcited. <laughs> I, might, I, might, I might trumpet yet. Thanks. Great, thanks. That's the spirit, Phil. Blow your own trumpet. Only when I have a good tune, Kirsty. Back in Oxfordshire, and Phil is joining me at Tim's next property. Having listened to him in the last house, I want to show him something with more character but we're travelling out of Oxford to get it. We've come to the pretty town of Abingdon, a reasonable eight-mile cycle southwest of Oxford. So this is a lovely communal area. It's around a 45-minute cycle to Tim's work, but we tick most of the property boxes. Here is the oldie-worldy feel that you were yes, for. Yes, it's very pretty. Unfortunately, it's not in Oxford. Would you commute eight miles on the bike? Um, I could try. Um, it depends on the route. Well, if this would help fix you on the possibility of living outside Oxford, mm. this flat is on the market at £220,000. OK. Yeah, that does change things slightly. Yeah. OK. Ah, uh, the sight of a saving never fails to spark interest. And this characterful maisonette sparkles on the inside too. Upstairs, there's a spacious bedroom with some fantastic storage and it's tastefully finished throughout. Downstairs has a good-sized dining-come-living room, a modern kitchen and second bedroom. And for cyclist Tim, there's even a bike shop backing onto the courtyard, a great place to meet fellow road warriors. On the market at £220,000, it's 30 grand under budget. Wow. Yeah, I like the exposed beams. It's properly quaint. Yeah, this is kind of exactly what I was, I was looking for. Oh. We don't I, hear that every day. <laughs> Ideally in Oxford. Yeah. Did you see anything like this in Oxford when you were looking? I did, occasionally, but again, it sold so quickly. Speed is key, but two years on and Tim is still searching for the holy grail of a flat. I think it's time for a chat. Bit of space up here as well, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> you wanted beams. I did. <laughs> so when you see this kind of space and this kind of interest, Yes. The question is, does it make the eight-mile cycle to Oxford? That's, that's the question. It's ticking all the boxes in property terms. I suppose yeah. the key is, it's not just the commute, it's do I want to live yes. in Abingdon? Yes. This is where my home will be. Yes. The house itself is a hit, but I fear Tim's heart does not dwell in Abingdon. <laughs> you, you're trying to hypnotise yourself. Uh, what, into thinking this is Oxford? Which it's not. No. I mean, you presented him with a conundrum, but I think it was the right decision because it's a very nice flat. Yeah, but the problem is that when he said things do come up on the market occasionally, mm. that means that he thinks that this is available in Oxford for 250 which it just it's isn't. Not. Tim's fantasy flat is one rare artefact he's not going to get his hands on. In the meantime, house prices have gone up in the last two years, and the longer he delays, the less he can afford. So, Tim. What's it to be? What do you reckon? What's in your mind? Um, I need to decide, I think, um, property or location. We've done central Oxford and we've seen what you can get. We've come right out to Abingdon and, and we've seen this. Mm -hmm. Let's go back in a little bit, the other side of town, and see what, you know, 
I wouldn't want to call you Goldilocks, but we might get you there in the end. <laughs> now that would be a fairy tale result. Just believe in me, Phil. I'm in Gloucestershire, where my globe-trotting couple are searching for their next adventure. The question is where? Right now, your guess is as good as mine. And I'm in the heart of Oxford with Ash Molian, Senior Collections Officer Tim. Let's hope I don't drop the vase. With his parents' gift of an early inheritance, Tim's desperate to end years of renting. But searching in one of the most unaffordable locations in the UK is making it far from easy. Over in Gloucestershire, and despite reservations about the neighbouring M50, Phil and Louise loved Property 2 in Forthampton. That is breathtaking. Stunning. And even with my long checklist and extensive search area, I think my next property package is a step up again. We're only seven miles northwest of Gloucester, set amongst the countryside for photographer Phil, yet just over two miles to the busy village and amenities of Newant for Louise. Right, what we've got here t today is a Grade 2 listed mill house. It's not lived in, but mm -hmm. you've got the bare bones of something that could be really special. Very attractive. Yeah. I feel laughs at me because I talk about houses being handsome. Yes. And I think this is a very handsome yes. house. It sure is, Louise. And despite being a little dated on the inside, this house offers the most flexibility so far. The fantastic kitchen diner leads to a cosy living room and the four bedrooms upstairs means plenty of scope for a growing family. Outside, there's the wow factor. Over three acres of beautiful land for Phil's photo shoots, their own stream, an annex for mum and a stable that could become a photo studio. And this property is a whopping 40 grand under budget of £460,000 and there's room to negotiate. This is the annex. It obviously needs a bit of TLC now, but it was lived in by a family member at, at one point. Obviously, it needs mm -hmm. insulation and some heat, but in terms of size and that kind of thing, what would you reckon your mum would say? I think probably after work's done on it, I guess. Make it, it nice could and cosy. Probably cozy. work, yeah. Subject to planning permission and a few design niggles, I'd say Louise and Phil are up for it. Let's hope your idea for Phil's business delivers too. Welcome to your photographic studio. Wow. Oh, uh, the height's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, no, really good. But it's not just that. It also comes with three and a half acres of paddocks. Wow. Oh, wow. No, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Really pretty. The house on, on all of this, including three and a half acres, comes in at 460,000. Why, really? Why? Interesting. Now, that's really focused their attention. Go Spencer. Let's see how things develop in the main house. Come on in. Oh. The big open-plan kitchen with its range, space for dining. This is nice. Imagine yeah. it at Christmas with big table, yeah. you're preparing the food here. The space to do it. And Louise can even imagine herself living here. This could be a nice little snug. Games room. <laughs> well, this is all going very well indeed. They seem to love it. But then they did also seem to love the first two houses. So maybe I'm not reading it correctly. I don't think so, Phil. I'd say you have 20-20 vision on this house. I love the amount of land there is here. The fact that you could create a really nice outdoor seating area. And the stream is just so pretty. Yeah, yeah, no, it's lovely. It's all very well having options, but I really need some decisions. Is it somewhere you can picture yourselves living? I can see it in my head more than the other one, I think. The fact that you could make it your own, you have a little bit of flexibility to actually have work done here, mm -hmm. um, to the annex and also inside the house. Is there anything that we've seen that is definitely out? Yes. Yes. Both the houses from yesterday. Oh, yeah. oh fuck. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so overnight... What about the barn? So overnight, we've mulled it over. And I think with that road noise, it would just grate after a while. This one probably ticks more boxes for me yeah. as well. Thank Good you. stuff. Come on, then. Best foot forward. How's that for decisive, Phil? Yep, that may be two properties out, but this one is firmly in the running. Pressing my advantage, I'm heading straight to my final option. It's a complex layout and may just need two of us, so I've drafted in the other half. We've come nearly 14 miles south of Gloucester to the village of Coley. Countryside all around, but walkable to amenities for Louise. This old village post office could suit all the family's needs. So we're starting in here. So this could be the studio. So in terms of photography studio, you wanted height, didn't you? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's got nice height. The beams, I, I love old beams. I think yeah. they just give a really nice sense of history. Well, let's get back and have a look, look at, at the, the house. house. Yeah. Right. This peerage house is an enormous 3,288 square feet and is full of character, currently divided into two independent living quarters. The main area has a cosy living room, kitchen and bright conservatory, whilst the annex has its own living room and spacious kitchen diner. And six bedrooms upstairs offers them plenty of space, but how they separate and divvy them up will need some thought. There's a pretty family garden outside and a garage for Phil's business. It's on the market just under budget at £498,000. Now this is, as it were, the annex room. OK. But I don't think you need to be bound by what is and is not currently the annex. Right. I would advise you to look around this house absolutely ignoring the contents of any room. Right. Mm. Because there are kitchen cabinets in it doesn't make it a kitchen. It's a fantastic opportunity but it requires a shed load of vision. Yeah. From what we can see so far, it looks yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, location's nice. So why don't you guys just kind of run a mark and get, get your bearings, and then we can have a chat about it. Great. OK. OK. OK, thanks. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. It's like a, some kind of competition, Phil. Competition? Yeah. You know, house hunters race around the house and oh. see how quickly they can get their bearings. Well, it, it, takes, it takes me a while. I know. It's very difficult to get your head around, particularly at your age. Yeah, so guest room, I guess. She's ever so nice. I do love her. <laughs> and I love the potential in this house, Phil. Yes, let's hope they can see it too. Are you gazing out at the church? <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful church, it isn't is it? It is beautiful. I really like that idea of actually having stuff going on around you and being yeah. able to walk places. I'm struggling a bit with the house. Yes. I don't quite get it. I'm not getting the fuzzy feeling yet. Perhaps some divine intervention will get Louise on side here. My hands are firmly clasped. Over to you. I did say, Phil, ignore the furniture in the rooms, didn't mm -hmm. I? And here we are, very cheekily, testing out the chairs. But it occurs to me that this is much the nicer room for your mum. I think so. Why couldn't you be in the annex and have the bigger kitchen and family room? Uh -huh. Does it elicit passion? It's cosy. I mean, it feels it feels right. I think Louise was talking about the one thing that was missing from many of the other properties was being in in somewhere, and this will probably work well for her, which kind of means my life is a bit easier if it works for her. So. So they say Phil yeah. has an expression: "Happy wife, happy life." It's not wrong. <laughs> I shan't tell him he's not wrong. It's bad for him. But I shall tell him how we can make this property work for our couple. Another one. Another bedroom? I think I might have overcooked it with this one. No, I think you're wrong. I think it's good. Kitchen for the mother-in-law, bedroom, bathroom, which is the current utility room, mm. sitting room, all on one level, mm. lovely little annex, mm. all really cosy, lovely sitting room with fireplace. Mm. And they have all of the rest of the house. Perfect. Done deal. Thank you, Kirsty. <laughs> she came, she saw, she laid down the law. Yes, Phil, there's a new sheriff in town. I sure hope Phil and Louise are following the rules. You got your heads around yeah. it? I think so. <laughs> mm. It is quite a complicated yeah. one, isn't it? There's a lot to see, there's a lot to think about. Yeah. You don't sound convinced, Louise. I'm not. How about you, Phil? I think after our chat, I think probably a little bit more positive, cos changing the layout to suit us a bit better may well, may well work. Um, is it better than the one that we've already seen? Who knows? That's a, a chat I think What's we need to What's your feeling, have. Louise? I would rate number three house above this one, quite far above, right, right. now. OK. I think I need to think about it. OK, do. OK. Yeah. Fair enough. Keep up the fight, Deputy, when you're not done yet. First-time buyer Tim is looking for a one-bed starter flat in the heart of Oxford. And even with a quarter of a million pound budget, he's struggling but this would go a bit further in other cities. In Manchester, it would buy you a trendy two-bed flat smack in the city. North of the border in Edinburgh, you could be enjoying a fantastic three-bed family home on the edge of town. And in Cardiff, you could sit back in a three-bed detached house with an easy commute to the centre. But we all know it's location, 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 and Oxford's the city for Tim. Property one was too modern. Property two, too far out. 
so I'm trying to find him somewhere that's just right. And I may have done it with my next property in the village of Kidlington. Three miles north of the Ring Road, it's a manageable 25-minute cycle to Tim's work in Oxford. Within this beautifully converted manor house, it oozes the charm and character he's after too. So, how are we doing for location, Tim? Good location. Um, I like Killington. Right. Um, it's a good distance from Oxford. Feeling good. Okay. Feeling good about this. Good. Okie dokie. Fantastic. Now we're getting somewhere, and I think the inside of this first floor flat is exactly what he's asked for too. And at 1,251 square feet, it's the biggest space we've seen. There's a lovely open plan living, dining, kitchen area and two good-sized bedrooms. It's over budget at £275,000, but we think there's flexibility. I'm going to tell you straight up before we step one foot further the situation. OK. So this went on the market at 285,000. It's now been reduced to 275,000. But they haven't had any second viewings. Really? And um, I think it's much more realistic to think about 255, 260. OK. In my opinion, it has enormous potential. Yeah. Love the ceiling. The ceiling height is cracking. I would get rid of that blue line so fast because <laughs> all that blue just makes the ceiling seem lower. But how does it strike you initially? Um, nice. It's got sort of character features. Um, yeah, positive. Location tick, character tick, full marks Kirsty. Fingers crossed it's good enough to convince Tim. This room is really lovely. Yeah. This is definitely the biggest bedroom that I've seen. It's nice to actually have space. It's space, but also, if you... I mean, I'm just going to sit down here for a second. Waking up to that window, I think, is really, really lovely. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of this flat. I think because of its untapped potential. And it's nice that I can actually do something to it as well, that it's yes. not this finished, polished no. thing. I think this is the best I've seen so far hands down. It's not in the centre of Oxford, but it's very close um, and there are shops just around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect cycling distance. Yeah, can I see the, yeah, the of second course, bedroom? Yeah, of course. Well, let me, I'll go and sit in the sitting room and you wander around. Wow, well done. This beauty might just end Tim's lengthy flat search. Let's hope so, but properties here are hard to come by. If he likes it, he'd better grab it. So this got a big thumbs up. It is more than he wanted to spend. It would be a real stretch. It's not in the centre of Oxford. But it's a flat that he'd be hard pushed to grow out of. And the fact is, Tim's 34. And he can't go around buying a bachelor pad. Well, he can. Technically, he can. But I'd rather I didn't help him do that. But he will need your help if he's to get this place. It needs some tough negotiating on the price. I think this really kind of ticks the boxes for space-wise. Um, I just need to find some more money. 250 is your top limit. Yep. Um, you know, we can see, you know, we can offer 250 and see what happens. It's worth just trying. OK, OK. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm just going to have a, another one yeah, around. Yeah, That's right. Tim, this is your house hunt. Everything is all right. OK. <laughs> Tim's starting to look like a rabbit in the headlights, Kirsty. Yep, but I hope that's just the dawning realisation that two years of house hunting may be coming to an end. Just outside Oxford, tension is high as my first time buyer, Tim, is in a quandary about the last property in Kidlington. I think this really ticks the boxes, space-wise. Um, I just need to find some more money. Back with Phil and Louise in Gloucestershire, there are two houses in the running and they have some news. You've obviously had a bit of a chance to have a think. Where, where are you at today? Well, we had a sleep on it, and I think where we, where we came to is that property four is lovely. However, the fact that you'd actually have to do quite a lot of work, it's already at the top end of our budget, yeah. it means yeah. that it's definitely on the back burner for now. How about property three? Lots of potential. You really loved the look of it. You said mm -hmm. you got your fuzzy feeling. I did. Yes. Um, <laughs> which is great, and you reminded me again last night that that's yeah. what it was. So. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. So I think we'd like to investigate that one further. Yeah. Fine. So it's back to property three in Newent for a second look. 
So how does it feel back here at the mill house? Feels good. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Fuzzy feeling. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm pleased. But second viewings are more about head than heart. A fuzzy feeling is one thing, but it's time for some precise figures. We've lined up a builder to find out renovation costs for that all-important annex for Phil's mum. Probably looking 24 to 36,000 for a brick built building. Probably 12,500 to renovate it and put new windows and electrics. Different from other places that we've looked at, it's genuinely separate. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's yeah. not. It'll be quite nice for her to have a bit of space to herself and, mm -hmm. and for yeah. us as well. But us yeah. to also have the space in the middle to yeah. meet and obviously the garden. So twelve and a half grand to modify the existing building, or up to thirty-six grand for a new one. But this house is forty thousand pounds under budget, which I hope is enough to swing it. It's quite a bland room, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. But, I mean, you could do something with it. Put a fire in the corner or something. Yeah, I think eventually you get some kind of wood-burning thing in here. So what do you think overall? What, the house? Yeah, it's great. Love it. A lot to think about and a lot of money. While Phil and Louise crunch the numbers just outside Oxford, Tim loves the location and the flat, but will it be enough to finally bring his lengthy search to an end? This flat is more than you wanted to pay. Yep. But we can start with 250 and see what happens. Mm. If you want it. This is definitely top of the list of what I've seen so far. As my parents have given me so much money, I'd really like them to see the flat maybe yeah. before I put an offer in. Yeah, of course, of course, of um. course, of course, course. Have your parents seen any of the flats you've been looking at? I've never seen one that I've wanted, I've thought, yeah, you should come all the way down here to view. In your so, mind, yeah. is there a really lovely one bed right in the centre of Oxford that you just haven't found yet? That will, is always in my mind. Perfect scenario would be one of those. Have you ever actually walked into one and actually seen one? Uh, no. There's a possibility that the thing that you are trying to find doesn't exist. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit of a white whale. Yeah. I wish you could get the picture of it out of your mind and I could see it on paper. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Either a light bulb goes off in your head and you think it doesn't exist and it evaporates, or it appears. And in the meantime, you've conjured up a very good option for discussion with Mum and Dad. Agreed, Phil. I've done everything I can. Let's just see what materialises. But on my side, they may be ready to offer. How are you feeling now, then? This is a lovely house. And I think right from when we first saw it, mm -hmm. yeah. we yeah, loved it. Yeah. I think we just need to think about how much we need to do to it to make it work for us and all of us. You've got to be confident in your decisions. It's a lot of money at the end of yeah. the day. And it's a lot of work as well. To get things right. Yep. How much wiggle room is there on the budget, do you think? Not much, because there is another offer from somebody who is unable to proceed, but they've offered 450. I think we yeah. need to sleep on it a little bit more yeah. and do the sums. Right. Mm -hmm. You're right to just be a bit considered, take some time and do your numbers. I'm delighted that we've found somewhere that you're, you're happy with. It's, it's yeah. just a question of, of there is a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But the, there always was, because your, <laughs> your wish list was rather long. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Terrific. Let's speak in the next few days. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've found the right house, but now Louise and Phil need time to decide on the right price. Nine weeks on, and I'm happy to report progress in both our searches. In Oxford, first-time buyer Tim had to decide if he was prepared to swap city life for traditional charm. I promised Kirsty that I'd go back with my parents the following weekend, um, which I did. They liked it, but Tim got cold feet. It made me realise that a character property isn't important. Um, I want ugly and overpriced um, in the right location. A bit of a turnaround, but Kirsty's efforts weren't in vain. Tim is now much more focused on what he actually needs. I've learned so much about what I'm looking for. I don't need beams in my bedroom. I just need a bedroom 
within the ring road. And now we've helped him come up with a realistic wish list, he should finally crack his search for that perfect pan. I'm just really looking forward to kind of actually finding it, buying it, and then moving in. We left Louise and Phil in Gloucestershire with a house they'd fallen in love with, but which also had another interested party. We slept on it. Um, we thought about the other offer that was in. We decided then that we were going to match it. Mm -hmm. But their offer of 450000 10000 short of the asking price, wasn't successful. So we upped our offer to asking. They accepted very quickly. And, uh, yeah, we've been going on with the process since. Mm -hmm. After years of globetrotting, this pair are now looking forward to setting down roots with young daughter Annabelle. I think this will be a really happy home. We want to entertain a lot and just making it feel like really very much the heart of, of our family. And of course, that includes Phil's mum, who's making the move back to the UK from Spain. She's really excited about coming over and being really a, a big part of Annabelle's life. And if she wants to do our ironing, then that's fine <laughs> as well. <laughs> So a job well done. We're incredibly grateful to Phil. We wouldn't have been able to find it without him. The house of our dreams. It's been fantastic. Mm. Now I've got the fuzzy feeling. <laughs>